Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about that, that vexed topic of having to stay at home if you've got or been exposed to COVID. I've got Asha Bowen and Chris Blythe here. Um, let's start with the obvious topic. Chris, I'll start with you. Um, one of you, your family actually has COVID, is unwell, uh, whether it's one of the adults or one of the kids. What does that mean in terms of what, what you are allowed to do at home and how you should manage that? Well, there's two issues here about if you've got one family member, how do you prevent other family members getting it? And the second issue is how you prevent other people in the community getting it. So if you've got one family member, normally we recommend to try and isolate that person as much as possible from other members of the family. Now, I know that's difficult in the our home environment. So usually having their own bedroom or a single room, trying to limit contact as much as possible, but also maintaining those simple things, good hand washing, good cough etiquette, using tissues with sneezes and elbows with coughs, I think is really important around that. Now, the next hard question is, what does it mean as far as the community? Those with confirmed COVID infection are being requested to stay home until advised that they are free to come out of isolation at this stage. And public health are giving those clear messages to those who are infected at this stage when they can come out and when they can resume their normal duties. And I'd be deferring to the public health unit who will give that advice. And what does that mean to stay home? Can you, like, what about if you go for your jog in the morning, you don't actually come in direct, direct contact with many people, are you allowed to do that? Well. We are really trying to limit transmission of this virus through the community at this stage. So I'm imploring those who do have confirmed or suspected infection to stay home to limit contact with other people. So in my mind, that means staying in your home or your yard and limiting contact to your neighbours and your community. And what do you recommend for both the person who's sick and the other family members around face masks, eating implements, towels, those sorts of things? Sorry. In those who are able to wear them, those who are infected, we would recommend wearing a face mask. Now, I understand for very young children, sometimes that's practically not possible, but for older children and adults, wearing a face mask will limit infection to others. Clearly, avoiding sharing implements, such as eating utensils and glasses and things like that, may also reduce transmission, and that would be something I would recommend. I would request that people just use their brain in this sort of situation, think about the way things are transmitted and try to limit those opportunities. And what about if you're, you've been told to stay at home and isolate yourself? Um, you're not sick, but you've obviously been exposed or potentially been exposed. What does that look like? Um, it looks like stay at home, please. Right. Um, we really want those people who um, have been exposed to COVID or um, are in the process of being tested for it to essentially have no social contacts as much as is possible. So I realise that within the family there will still be social contact, but outside of that with the community to really minimise those, those contacts. And so it is difficult to stay at home, but that's what you're being asked to do at the moment. And if someone's got COVID in the house, how long is this isolation going to run for that person and for the rest of the family? Okay, so for the sick child who's been diagnosed with COVID, um, it's likely that those symptoms could continue for two to three weeks and the public health will advise when it's um, safe for that child to return to their normal activities. And essentially those principles are going to apply for everyone in that household. So we want the household contacts to also stay home so that um, they're not likely to spread COVID to the community or to other people. We also want to make sure that there are not people visiting the homes um, when there's someone sick so that we're not inviting extra people into that home, um, which would also, I guess, increase their level of exposure. It's particularly important, I think, for grandparents and for um, other, I guess, older aunties and uncles who may um, want to help out. But we know that we want to protect our older um, um, community members and we really want to minimise those contacts. So that sounds like a big deal. You've got a sick child at home. You're talking a few weeks where they'll be sick. Then you and all your family members have to stay at home for that entire period. And now you're saying it's, you don't want other people coming to help out. So this is going to be a big deal for those families. It's a really big deal. Um, and I think it's important to take it as seriously as um, 
we're, we're discussing right here because we do want to try and minimise the number of people who do get infected with COVID. So um, trying to maintain that is really important. Some strategies that I have heard that families can, I guess, manage in this scenario is um, online grocery shopping. And it can be that the groceries can be delivered to the front door the grocery person can leave and then they can be collected. So there are ways that are already in place for this to occur. I think maintaining contact with friends and family via Facebook or via um, other forms of social media or video apps um, is a really good way to really maintain as much normal connectivity, but without that actual social contact, if at all possible. What about going out in the backyard? I think going out to the backyard is important at this stage, particularly if you're not mixing with other people. Um, people need to get outside. Two weeks of home isolation inside is a very long period of time. So actually maintaining some normal things within the constraints of your house and your yard, I think is important as well. Um, people need to stay um, sane during this period of time. So therefore the con contact with the community, contact with the outside by non-face-to-face -face means and some time particularly in their own yard I think is very important. Taking the, the kid down to the local playground? Okay, all right. That's where I'd be saying actually that is not what we're expecting at this stage. We need to limit contact between people, particularly with those who have confirmed infections and those at risk. That occurs clearly in the playground, that doesn't occur in your backyard. And Chris, we're talking about this 14 day period, is that, is that really needed? What, what do we know about the incubation period of this virus? We know that most people are developing symptoms about day five and six after their exposure, but some are developing symptoms up to 10 days and even longer. So that 14 days is set as a threshold for safety at this stage, and it's a threshold that I strongly support at this stage, because we want to make sure that those who are isolated are not returning to contact if they are going to get infection. So it's a safety measure that needs to be in place. All right, so it's really, that's the maximum time that we know a case can develop after their last exposure right. and we're just playing it safe. That's which, right. Yeah. Which makes sense. All right, well look, thank you very much. It's a, it's a difficult one. As we heard, this is changing all the time. Um, the guidance as we get more cases, as we understand more about it, is likely to change. But for now, when you're asked to stay at home, that means stay at home.